next video, I want to talk about the upper and lower bounds theorem. This is really two theorems to the price of one. You can, of course, have the upper bound theorem, and you also have the lower bound theorem. Two tools that are very useful uh, to help us factor large degree polynomials very quickly. The rational roots theorem gives us a potential list of rational roots, and we can try them, but we don't want to try every single one of them. The upper and lower bounds theorems can help us identify when we're making bad choices with respect to uh, our potential rational roots. So if we have a f, and this is some real valued polynomial, then when f of x is divided by x minus b, maybe we think b is a potential rational root, right? When f of x is divided by x minus b, and I should mention that in this, if to use the upper bound theorem, b must be a positive number. It doesn't apply to negatives here. So if f of x is divided by a positive value, x minus b, and if you're using synthetic division, then you have your three rows of synthetic division. The first one will be the coefficients. The bottom, the second middle row has, just has just the, the numbers that show up in the middle. And then the bottom row will have the quotient and the remainder. Look at the bottom row. If the bottom row has no negative entries in it, no negatives whatsoever, that means that B is an upper bound for all the real roots of F. That means you picked a number that was too big. You need to try something smaller. If the numbers in the bottom row are all positive, you need to try something smaller. Uh, the lower bound theorem says that if f of x is divided by x minus a, which in this situation, a is a negative number. If you're dividing by a negative number, you can use the lower bound theorem. It doesn't apply to positives. If you're using synthetic division and the bottom row turns out to be alternating in signs, it alternates between non-positive, non-negative, non-positive, non-negative, switching signs, then that turns out your number is too small and you need to try something bigger. Let's try a specific example. Take a, f of x here to be x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. If we do synthetic division here, write down the coefficients in descending order, you're going to get 1, 0. Notice there's no x cubed term. We need a 0 right there. Negative 3, 2, and negative 5. Let's try dividing it by 2, x minus 2 to be specific here. So if you bring down the 1, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 0 is 2, times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1, times 2 is 2, plus 2 uh, is 4, times 2 is 8, minus 5 is 3. So you'll notice that the bottom row only contains positive. There's not a single negative there. And so what this tells us here is that we tried a number that was too big. If we want to find a positive root of the polynomial, we need to try something smaller. So for example, we know for a fact that positive 5 will not work because if 2 is too big, then 5 is even worse. So we should try something smaller. Um, on the other hand, if we tried something like, say, let's start this thing over again, 1, 0, negative 3, 2, and negative 5. Let's say we tried something like negative 3. If you bring down the 1, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, plus 0 is negative 3, times negative 3 is positive 9, minus 3 is a positive 6, times negative 3 is going to be negative 18, plus 2 is a negative 16, times by negative 3 is going to give us a positive 48, minus 5, you're going to get 43. And so you're going to notice here that the variation of signs, right, change of signs, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, each and every time. And so because it switches signs each and every time, this would tell us that negative 3 is too small. Now, I confess that for this polynomial, you should never try 2 or negative 3 because the rational roots test says we should be doing plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 5. I admit that that's the case here. But you, needless to say, this still demonstrates the upper and lower bounds theorems right here. We had a number that was too big because there was no variation of signs right here. We had a number that was too small because we had a maximum variation of signs. Now, there's an interesting thing when it comes to the lower bound theorem that you're going to want to look out for here. So if we take the polynomial g of x equals x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 7x minus 5, if we were trying to divide this one right here, notice the following. We write this down 1, 4, 3, 7, and negative 5. Whoops, I just wrote a plus sign. 7, negative 5 there. If we were to try to divide this by negative 4, notice what happens in this situation. Bring down the 1. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4 plus 4 is zero uh, times negative four will be zero plus three is three times negative four is negative 12 plus seven is a negative five times negative four is a, ne a positive 20 minus five would give us a 15 like so and look at the signs right here you're going to go from positive to zero to positive to negative to positive 
Um, so the nice thing about zero, zero is kind of like a wild card. Um, zero is this number that sits between the positives and negatives. So it can be whatever you want it to be basically here. So in this case, zero is kind of like positive and negative. So I'm like, oh, it's going to be a negative zero. So this is going to go from positive to negative to positive to negative positive. Because of the alternating signs right here, this would tell us that negative four is too small of a root. You need to try something bigger. So if you ever find a negative sign, it's going to be positive or negative, uh, whatever makes the alternating thing worse. So, uh, so negative zero would be okay in this situation. This is an example of something that's too small, and the lower bounds theorem would apply here.